Healing Hands Health Society presents Dental Webinar Series. We have planned a series of dental webinars to keep you abreast of current practice. This series on prosthodontics will be via Zoom, Facebook Live. Presenters are drawn from dental schools in the USA, private practitioners from around the world. To register for future webinars, visit www.hhands.org backslash dental dash training. Dr. Judy Yuan is a, is a tenured prof associate professor at, uh, and director of the uh, pre-doctoral implant education at the University of Illinois at Chicago uh, College of Dentistry. She received a, a BA from the University of California at Berkeley. She received a DDS certificate in prosthodontics and MS in oral sciences from the state University of New York at Buffalo. She's current, she has subsequently uh, participated in an international team of implantology scholars in Bern, Switzerland. Uh, she's a diplomat of the American Board of Prosthodontics and a fellow of the American College of Prosthodontics. She received, she had received several teaching awards and at the professional uh, organizations and, and several meetings. She's um, very approachable, uh, <laughs> that I would say she has authored over you know, 60 peer reviewed mm. papers served in the editorial board for the Journal of Dental Education and the Journal of Prosthodontics. Our research interest includes dental educational research, implant dentistry, and other related areas. Welcome, welcome. Thank you so much for, for, for your willingness to participate in this uh, uh, dental webinar series. Thank you, thank you. I would like to say hi to Dr. Matthew uh, as well. I saw his name here. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and stop my video for now and then share the screen and let me know if you can see it, okay? Um, good, uh, good afternoon um, or good evening. Um, first, uh, I'm hoping everybody's uh, staying healthy and safe. Um, and I really appreciate this opportunity to be here and to share with you my experience in predoctoral implant education at the University of Illinois at Chicago. Um, so I'm going to go ahead uh, um, during this presentation, I will describe um, the predoctoral implant education, its curriculum, uh, workflow, both conventional and digital pathway assessment and publication. And I will also talk about our um, advanced predoctoral implant program. Um, that was established to provide more in-depth learning experiences in implant dentistry for selected students. So our predoctoral implant education follows a comprehensive model, which is reflected on our competency statement. Uh, our students will be competent in the assessment, diagnosis, treatment planning, and treatment of patients required requiring single tooth implant restorations and implant supported overdentures. Starting from our second year spring semester, we offer a didactic course with lectures and hands-on laboratory exercises for both single tooth implant and implant supported overdenture therapy. And during the third and the fourth year of their training, they provide clinical care for their patients needing implant supported restorations. And the didactic course follows a restorative driven philosophy with interdisciplinary approach from prosthodontics, periodontics, and oral surgery disciplines. The invited lecturers um, are department chairs and program directors from restorative, um, oral surgery, and periodontics discipline. The Lecture topics cover from initial diagnosis and treatment planning from both restorative and surgical aspects. The biomaterial aspect of implant dentistry is also discussed. Then the conceptual and step-by-step -step restorative phase of single tooth implant and implant supported overdenture therapy are also described. Finally, the complication and failures of impl dental implants are included in our lecture series. So here, um, for the pre-patient care laboratory exercise, we focus on uh, single tooth implant restoration and implant supported overdenture from initial planning to complete restorations. Now I'd like to share with you a brief overview 
of um, single tooth implant restoration laboratory exercise. Students first duplicate the diagnostic wax up um, and fabricate their surgical guide using the thermoplastic material and orthoresin. Then they placed um, implants on a stone cast using the surgical guide. And then they take uh, implant level impressions using both open tray and the closed tray techniques. They also get to fabricate the provisional on the implant they placed. Um, we are teaching the implant supported over dental therapy as because um, this is the first choice of treatment uh, for mandibular edentulous arch according to the McGill consensus. So for this exercise, students duplicate the denture in denture flask uh, with alternate uh, impression material and ortho resin. A surgical slot is then prepared and students performed alveoloplasty, used the surgical guide to prepare the osteotomy sites and the place to implants on um, stone casts. Then the locator attachments and metal housings are placed. Um, dentures um, are prepared to be converted to overdenture using the repair resin. And appropriate inserts are placed. Uh, we also produce a high quality digital audio and visual resources um, to provide the students and assist them to um, visualize the procedures. These resources are posted on the Blackboard platform for easy accessibility, efficient communication, and supplemental learning. These also help calibrate the faculty teaching in the program. In addition, these resources are available in the implant clinic to help prepare students for clinical patient care. Here, I'm gonna show a little um, brief clip of our um, videos. At the implant site is lightly roughened with an acrylic burr to assist with the retention of the acrylic. A thin layer of Vaseline is applied to the inside of the vacuform in all areas except the edentulous site. This will allow for easy removal of the excess acrylic. Okay, um, how do we assess the second year dental students? There are several assessment tools used to evaluate student learning. In the implant didactic course, a written exam and quizzes are used to evaluate their fundamental knowledge. Uh, for laboratory exercise, there are students self-evaluation form and the faculty evaluation forms. We also have EBD, evidence-based dentistry projects. Um, so a clinical scenario is given to the student and they formulate a PICO framework and search literature to answer clinical questions. There's also station to station exam at the end of the semester. The station to station exam is in multiple choice format given on iPad platform. Finally, ASCII Objective Structure Clinical Exam is given in a multidisciplinary based clinical scenarios. Um, students start um, providing uh, implant care um, for their patients at the third year of their training. The predoctoral implant program is in a dedicated clinic with a select group of prosthodontics faculty members who supervise all phases of implant therapy except the surgical phase. There are eight chairs in our clinic and seven chairs are used for treatment procedures and one chair is used for consultation. Treatment procedure appointment is scheduled for three hours while each consultation appointment is scheduled for one hour. This means that in each clinical session, there are maximum of seven treatment procedures and three consultation appointments. And we have two prosthodontics faculties assigned for each clinical session. And in addition, we have one dental assistant and two front desk receptionists to support the clinic. A quick overview of implant patient flow in our clinic. For all patients, a careful assessment diagnosis and consultation is needed prior to formulate a treatment plan. The patient goes through the surgical phase, restorative phase, 
and the maintenance phase. As part of the comprehensive exam, each student um, schedule potential implant patients in the implant clinic for assessment, diagnosis, consultation, and treatment planning. They mount the cast with diagnostic wax up on a semi-adjustable articulator. And diagnostic cast uh, and diagnostic checklist is then used to guide the students to properly assess the potential sites and refer any complex patient scenarios to postgrad prosthodontics clinic. A brochure on implant dentistry and expectations for both single tooth implant and implant supported over denture therapy are available for patients to view as well. Once the patient is approved for predoctoral implant program, they are assigned to surgical providers for surgical consultation and treatments. Three disciplines support um, the surgical aspect of the predoctoral implant program, oral surgery, periodontics, and the prosthodontics disciplines. And the patient distribution to these clinic is 40% to oral surgery, 40% to periodontics, and 20% to prosthodontics. Now I would like to talk a little bit about the digital workflow in the predoctoral implant education. In 2016, we have also established a competency statement and learning objectives for um, implant supported single unit digital restorations. The intent is for students to receive the instruction and the experience necessary to become competent in providing care using the digital technologies to restore single tooth um, implant restorations. Students should also be able to describe available digital techniques for single unit restorations, collaborate with um, technicians, and properly refer for more complex patient scenarios. So during the implant uh, dentistry, uh, our digital implant dentistry is uh, integrated into um, the core implant uh, curriculum, which consists of lectures and hands-on preclinical and clinical exercise. We have the CAD CAM hands-on exercise using the intraoral scanners uh, with, intra, uh, with scan body and make digital impression using um, the trio scanner on CAS. The session is usually one hour long with six faculty for 13 students um, ratio. Uh, we have another session with digital technician showing videos on lab-based um, scan workflow, file transfer, and Atlantis abutment web order. Students are, expect, uh, are exposed to implanted digital technology starting from the second year. And this prepares them to apply the CAD CAM technology in providing patient care. Um, here, just a, a quick overview on our restorative workflow in the predoctoral implant clinic. The conventional workflow um, is that when the students make an implant level PBS impression and pull up a soft tissue working cast, mount the cast on an articulator and send them to the manufacturer for Atlantis abutments. Once abutments um, is tried in and acceptable, then the casts are sent out again to a commercial lab for crown fabrication. We um, initiated this partial digital workflow in June 2015. Students make an implant level PVS impression, uh, pour up soft tissue working casts, and mount the cast on articulator for in-house lab scan. An abutment is ordered without sending any cast to the manufacturer. After the abutment try-in, uh, restoration is virtually designed through core file, and all ceramic crown is milled from monolithic Emacs CAT block. There's no shipping in and out of the laboratory. We have um, established a fully um, digital workflow um, since April 2016, using the digital impression to request Atlantis custom abutments and using the core file to fabricate old ceramic Emacs CAD crown in-house. 
Uh, digital implant dentistry incorporates digital technologies to deliver dental care with optimum accuracy. Some examples of technology includes the combined CT, intraoral scanners, lab scanners, and the digital planning softwares. Here in our um, program, we have um, uh, intraoral trio scanner. We have um, both lab base, uh, three shape, and the dental wing scanners and uh, um, the three axis uh, milling machine from Plameca. So a uh, lab based or model based scanning, um, utilizing a laser surface scanner to copy the cast or wax up. And it is used to in design and the planning software. On the other hand, the intraoral scanning captures the three-dimensional information um, from patient's dentition or from transfer the location of the implant to a virtual space. So here is the step-by-step -step predoctoral implant digital workflow. We use TRIO's intraoral scanner with scan body to make um, the digital impression of the implant position. Using the software, the implant size is selected. Abutment material and the crown materials are also selected. Then we start making um, the digital impression following the steps. We start with a posing arch um, with just a quadrant and scan the implant site without healing abutment and mark the gingival margin. And insert the scan body and take a radiograph to confirm seating of the scan body. Make a digital impression over the scan body only, and then remove the scan body and take a um, digital impression of the arches in maximum intercuspation. The software will automatically align the two arches together. And then in the information is sent to the Atlantis website to create an uh, abutment order. So an abutment is then virtually designed by the, by the manufacturer. Here in our program, all custom abutments are reviewed and approved by implant faculty before it's uh, milled by the manufacturer. The abutment is then tried in the intraorally and to confirm the proper orientation, occlusal clearance, and a margin location. Then the core file is ordered to, on the Atlantis website, and the crown is virtually designed and milled in-house. Here is the delivered um, restoration in our predoctoral implant program, both patients and students were excited about the technology and its clinical application. This workflow eliminates the need for conventional impressions, probing the casts, articulation of working cast, and the shipping in and out, therefore saving the time and the material. Um, during their clinical training at third and the fourth years, students are assessed differently. Uh, in, in regards to their implant education. Students, again, assi assessed through ASCII through, uh, with multidisciplinary based clinical scenarios. At the end of the third year, uh, students are required to submit a patient progress report through Blackboard platform. This document um, helps students to keep track of their implant patient care experience also allows me to follow their implant education and progress. Prior to their graduation, the fourth year dental students are required to submit their implant patient portfolio, uh, which documents their patient care from initial assessment, diagnosis, treatment options, surgical phase to restorative and maintenance phase for one single tooth implant restoration and one implant supported over denture patient care. They are also asked to reflect their experience and provide self-evaluation of the process. The students um, submit their portfolio through UIC platform. 
most of them find the implant patient uh, portfolio helpful uh, when they are out for interview for their um, job. So to assess our predoctoral implant program at UIC, we had performed some studies to evaluate clinical outcome, student perspectives of their education, and the patient perspective of their experience. As demonstrated by our three-year um, clinical outcomes, our predoctoral implant program can provide predictable patient-centered therapy with few complications. Patient therapy guided by thoughtful diagnosis and driven by a restorative outcome can lead to favorable results. When we surveyed our students about, our, uh, about their perspectives on laboratory exercise and the clinical experience, they felt that laboratory exercise um, are important in implant education and prepare them for providing dental implant therapy in the clinic. Majority of students plan to provide a single tooth implant and implant supported over dental treatments for their future patients after they graduate. We ask the board certified prosthodontist to evaluate the aesthetic outcome of single tooth implant restorations in aesthetic zone use, using the PES WES criteria. The results show that with strict guidance and the proper case selection, predoctoral students are able to provide aesthetically acceptable single tooth implant restorations in aesthetic zone. We also surveyed the patient satisfaction with implant treatments at the predoctoral implant clinic. They were highly satisfied with the aesthetics of the prosthesis delivered by predoctoral students. Now I would like to talk about our advanced predoctoral implant program, short named APIP. So this program was established to provide more in-depth and experiences in implant dentistry for selected students. It provides opportunity for the fourth year dental students to engage in all phases of implant dentistry, including implant placement uh, for their own patients. It also encourages interest in specialty program, such as prosthodontics, oral surgery, and periodontics. The selection process is strict. They need to maintain good academic standing and implant component grade. The students need to submit an application form with a personal statement and a letter of clinical faculty recommendation and approval from their managing partner in the clinic. They also need to have two surgical assists prior to applying to this program. Currently, we have um, a, a total of eight students, four from the DMD cohort and four from the AS cohorts. They are assigned based on their interest uh, to one of the three disciplines, oral surgery, periodontics, um, and the prosthodontics. A multidisciplinary implant group of the specialty program directors serves as mentors to each group of students and supervise the formulation of treatment planning as well as surgical procedures. Implant surgeries are performed by the predoctoral students, assisted by program uh, PG residents, while the faculty mentors strictly supervise all steps. Uh, all restorative treatment is completed in the predoctoral implant clinic with implant faculty. APIP students have additionally um, additional seminars um, on surgical planning using the Simplant uh, software, uh, Atlantis Abama web order and editing, and digital crown designed using the three shape software. They are also required to participate in literature review session and, um, and in PG Pros diagnosis and treatment planning seminar. At the end of the year, they are asked to make a 10 minute presentation uh, of their implant patient care and then share their experience. I would like to share with you one of the digital crown design exercise with APIP students. 
During the digital crown design exercise, the students learn how to request a core file from the Atlantis web order. Import the case into three shape designed software and start virtually design the crown using the core file. There are different tools available to shape the crown contour. Um, occlusal contact, interproximal contact, um, and we can also modify um, the cement space between abutment and the crown. To evaluate our um, advanced predoctoral implant program, we conducted a focus group discussion and a survey um, the participated students. The results show that the selected students are highly benefit from this experience and intend to increase their knowledge and skills in implant dentistry through formal education following graduation. The survey also indicated that this program has a positive influence on students' interest in surgically placing implants in their future practice and their confidence level in terms of restoring and surgically placing implants. I think this is uh, the end of my um, presentation. I thank you for your attention and uh, I am um, ready to entertain any questions. Thank you, thank you very much. That was, um, you know, this was a presentation, this was a class I took and I said, um, <laughs> I remember Benin. I said, you know what? Uh, we need to have this in Benin. That's that's what at the end of my my stay in in Chicago, uh, this was what called to me. And I, I'm thankful we are taking one step. I saw uh, there's a lecturer, Dr. Julie Omo, you're up here. I know we t we talked about this, and I'm hoping that uh, subsequently we can have those same um, um, lab exercises to take place in our school. Okay, uh, but before we we go into the um, the question time i'm just going to run the poll again um so let's get ready uh, i'm going to relaunch the poll so we can take a, pre a post and see whether our our uh... yes can you hear me okay yes right all right so let's see now what is the correct sequence phase uh, for implant therapy uh we should go ahead and do the consultation and to have a proper diagnosis and treatment planning then we go through the surgical phase, healing phase, restorative and maintenance. So 96% people got it correct. Great. Uh, question number two, what is the most uh, important phase in implant therapy? And it's uh, absolutely correct. It's a diagnosis and treatment planning phase. Um, for number three, that the fabrication of a surgical guide should be done prior to denture um, fabrication for a patient desiring mandibular implants supported over denture. So um, for our um, teaching philosophy here, we would like the patient to have a proper set of complete dentures, uh, maxillary and uh, mandibular dentures, to make sure that it's comfortable, it's aesthetically pleasing uh, for the patient, and then it's um, functional before we move ahead for the implant supported over denture. So the, and then we use that um, mandibular denture and then duplicate that to make that as a surgical guide. So actually uh, for this question, the mandibular denture needs to be um, properly fit before we move on to fabricate the surgical guide. So it will, I think the answer is false. Okay, um, number four, examples of digital technologies in implant dentistry include the following. It's uh, all of above, Combin CT, intraoral scanner, a lab-based scanner, that's right. Okay, um, question number five, if a digital workflow um, for implant restoration is planned, the following file needs to be ordered uh, during the Atlantis custom abutment requisition. Um, Yes, we need to order the core file um, to get the information, um, the exact replica, the digital uh, database of the uh, abutment for us to fabricate the crown. And according to McGill Consensus Conference, the two implants supported over denture should become the first choice of treatment for edentulous mandibular arch. Right, okay, thank you. All right. Uh 
So yeah, we're up to questions. If you are ready, if you have some questions, just type them in the chat. And or if you want to say something, uh, hey, Dr. Seda, is your hand? Are you raising your hand? Oh, okay. Uh, there's a first question there from Melissa. Melissa uh, has a question. Is this protocol to be followed for all patients, including those requiring bone augmentation? What do you do in those cases? Okay, that's an excellent question. Um, in our predoctoral implant uh, program, we, we do have 120 students each class. So we want to make sure that we uh, pick and choose our cases uh, carefully um, uh, using our diagnostic checklist. So we want to select the straightforward cases. Um, so for those who major need a major uh, surgical intervention before implant placement, um, meaning that you need to develop the site ahead of time uh, before we can place the implant. Those are, um, we, we call it rejected for, for our program. Then we refer them, um, those patients to postgrad prosthodontics for further care. However, if a patient needs a minor bone grafting that we, may, we can manage during um, implant placement at the same time. So implant placement simultaneously with minor bone grafting, uh, we are accepting those patients um, for our predoctoral implant program. We want to make sure that we, our students are able to manage any potential complications and um, able to provide um, treatments from start to finish. And then we want to make sure our patients has positive um, experience. And that's why we have um, uh, strict um, guidelines in terms of patient selections. I hope I answered your question. Okay. Uh, Dr. Sede, are you there? Um, I'm, going to, I'm going to get you um, while we're waiting for you guys, uh, for so any questions out there. Um, I know we had talked about, so what's the current, so that, that is what, uh, <laughs> I'm trying to find out what is what is what is the current status of um... Dr. Said. Are you there? Yes, I'm here. I'm listening to your question. Yes, the current status of uh, implant. Um, uh, the, what's the, what is the curriculum? What's the curriculum right now in terms of what do they have? Um... Well, before I go into that, let me uh, quickly thank uh, Dr. Judy Young for uh, sparing our time to share our knowledge with us. Uh, you recall that uh, this exercise was planned some six years ago. And, you, and at the same time, you recall the difficulties we had with internet connectivity. It was quite frustrating, but I'm happy at least we now have uh, the media to be able to uh, do this. Uh, like I, I said then, that the partnership will continue for as long as we are able to reach out to one another. So thank you very much. And uh, Kutino was with us earlier, Ron. I'm really happy that we have been able to sustain this relationship uh, through the continuous contact with you by OVO. I recall our time in University of Washington uh, where, where we shared some moments at the training. So thank you very much. And back to the question, uh, uh, the implant curriculum uh, varies from university to university. Uh, it's a, uh, you know, uh, the program we run, the BDS program, which is CCF's program, and the last two years is uh, a clinical dentistry. So this is integrated at the clinical level. So everything is taught, uh, 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 the didactic is given, and laboratory demonstrations. But of course, this uh, process of demonstration is not quite adequate because of the gaps that over you yourself uh, uh, have observed. And that is what we want to feel by this exchange and sharing of, of knowledge so that uh, when, they, uh, when the students graduate, they are prepared for the residency program if they decide to go that way, that route. And uh, that will help them in, uh, in developing interest and pursuing the necessary part of study. Thank you. Okay. Uh, all right. Uh, uh, Dr. Julie Omo, I know you are there. We are talking about so the lab. Healing Hands Health Society presents dental webinar series. We have planned a series dental webinars to keep you abreast of current practice. This series on prosthodontics will be via Zoom, Facebook Live. Presenters are drawn from dental schools in the USA, private practitioners from around the world. To register for future webinars, visit www.hhands.org backslash dental dash training for future inquiries contact 
facilitator, 